uh, chapter six is chemical reactivity and mechanisms. So chapter six onwards, we'll be starting to talk about all the different reactions we can do with organic compounds, right? So when we talk about a reaction, what's happening in a reaction? A reaction, we break the bonds and we form new bonds, okay? So breaking and forming, right? So what are the different ways we can actually break a bond, okay? So a bond means two electrons, right? So let's say you have a bond between A and B, right? So how can I break this bond, okay? So a bond means two electrons, right? So there's an electron pair, okay? That's connecting the two atoms together, right? So A and B are connected with a bond. So I can take those two electrons and shift them on B, right? So I'm, take, I'm gonna take the electron pair and shift that on B. So that way I break the bond. So I'm taking electrons away from A and placing that electron pair on B, right? So A is losing electron because these are the shared electrons, right? So A is losing electrons, that means I should get a positive charge and B is gaining electrons, I should get a negative charge or you can also write down the electron pair on B, all right? So anything which has a positive charge is called as a cation and anything with a negative charge is called as a anion. So cation and anion, yeah. So <clears throat> this way we are actually taking the two electrons and placing them on B, right? So electron pair either goes on A or you can do other way around. I can place it on A, That in that case, A will become A minus and B will be positive. So you can do either way, right? So this is called as unequal breaking because the two electrons are going on B, so this is called as heterolysis. So hetero means unequal, lysis means breaking. So we're breaking the bond unequally, right? So other one, other way will be homolysis. So in this, in this case, what we do is we take the bond, right? And we place one electron on each atom. Okay, so I'm assuming that there are two electrons in the bond. So I take those two electrons, right? So there's an electron here, there's an electron here, and place that electron one on B and one on A, right? So when we move two electrons from one place to other place, we use a full headed arrow, okay? Curved arrow with a full head, okay? When we are moving a single electron, then we show with the half headed arrow. Okay, that means only one electron is moving from one place to other place. So in this case, A gets an electron, B gets an electron, okay? So when you have a single electron species, these are called as radicals. So what you get is two radicals, okay? And this is called as homolysis. So homo means equal and lysis means breaking. So we are breaking the bond equally, okay? They're all getting the one electron each, all right? So these are the ways you can break a bond, okay? There are different ways you can break a bond. So exactly opposite bond forming, right? So when you wanna form a bond, then what you have is you can bring the cations and anions together. Right. So you can bring your negative charge and electron pair, right? So cation and ions come together, okay, and they'll form the bond. So there'll be a bond. So sharing electrons, right? So B donates electrons to A, and when they donate or when they share electrons, there'll be a bond. Okay. And exact same way when you have the radicals. So each radical, okay, or each atom can donate the electron, okay. So one and one electron, two electrons is a bond. So bond breaking and bond forming. Okay, so these are the different ways we'll be, this is not the common one, but this is very common, okay? And that's what we're gonna be using. Anytime you wanna break a bond, we'll be using this, this format. And when you wanna form a bond, you'll use this format, okay? So when, are we, when we're writing organic reactions, we're also using some different types of arrows Right. So you got, I just explained to you the curved arrow with the full head on it. Okay. So what are the different arrows we'll see here, or what kind of different arrows we can have? Right. So the the most important one and the, the common one is this. Okay. So this arrow means this is a forward reaction arrow. That arrow means it's a forward reaction, right? And then you can have something like this. That means it's a reversible reaction. <clears throat> we have a curved arrow like this, right? And the curved arrow with 
full head and half head right and we have arrow like this right and then we have other arrow that is like this all right <clears throat> so this arrow means here this is the two electron moment so we are moving two electrons from one place to other place so two electron movement right this arrow means a single electron movement all right this is the resonance structure so that in signifies that you, these two structures are resonance structures right and this is retrosynthesis All right, and we will use this in the last chapter okay, in this semester. So these are the different arrows you'll be using in this class. All right, so we already used a couple of arrows so far. All right, so this one like resonance, moving two electrons, and the reaction arrow. All right, so stability of a carbocation. Okay, so first of all, what is a carbocation? So a cation is anything which has a plus charge, and if that plus charge is on the carbon, right? So if you have a positive charge on the carbon, then we call that as a carbocation. All right. So we can have different types of carbocations, right? So let's say you can have just one carbon by itself, right? Or we can have a carbon attached to one another carbon, like this, right? So that carbon has a positive charge, and that is attached to one another carbon, right? Or we can have carbon that is right to two other carbons right so again we are focused on this carbon right here okay that's your central carbon that has two other carbons right to it so one other carbon no other carbons right so in this case we have three carbons attached to it okay so we can have these three different types of carbocations right so attached to one carbon two carbons and three carbons and no carbons right so this carbocation here is called as a primary carbocation. So one prime. So that is primary carbocation. This is called as the, sorry. So this carbocation here is called as a methyl. It's only one carbon, so that is methyl, okay? So carbon, okay, carbocation attached to one other carbon, it is called as primary. Carbocation attached to two other carbon is called as secondary and attached to three other carbon is tertiary. Okay, so we have all these carbocations possible. Okay, we cannot have more than this because carbon has three bonds and a plus charge here. Okay, so we cannot have four bonds with a plus charge because that will complete the octet. All right, and we also have two more carbo types of carbocations. Okay, and these are called as so you can have a double single carbon with a positive charge and we can also have something like this so we have so double single and positive charge like this okay so this is called as allylic and this is benzoic all right so these are the different types of carbocations we can have right so methyl primary secondary tertiary and then we have allylic and benzoic Okay, so we can categorize them two different ways right here. All right, so this is a separate category and this is a separate category. All right, so in this case, what you see here is a conjugation, right? So you have positive single double, positive single double, that's your resonance. All right, <clears throat> so here the order of stability, okay, so we're talking about the stability here, the stability goes from left to right, okay. So, stability increases. From the right. That means tertiary is the most stable in this chart right here. All right. Then secondary is the second most stable. Then comes primary and then comes methyl. So, stability increases from left to right. And why it's important, we'll learn eventually, okay? But this is a chart, whole chart of carbocations. That's what we have. All right, and this is the order of stability. Right. 
So carbocation ion rearrangement. So we have two different types of rearrangements can happen to a carbocation. Okay, there are more, but for this class, we only need to learn two of those. Okay. So what's the meaning of rearrangement, first of all? So the carbocation is trying to shift itself from one carbon to other carbon. Okay. In this case, the driving force always is the stability. Okay, so the carbocation is trying to be more stable. Okay, so let's say if it's if it's a primary carbocation, then it's trying to become a secondary or tertiary. Okay, and that's called as a rearrangement. So how can we actually change one type of carbocation into other type of carbocation? Okay, so let's say we have an example like this. Okay. So this carbon here has a plus charge, and what kind of carbon is that? Okay, so that carbon is attached to two other carbons, right? So that carbon is a secondary carbocation, okay? And we know the secondary is not the most stable, okay? So if it's a secondary carbocation, then it will try to make it to a tertiary, okay? So secondary will go to more stable. Secondary will try to become tertiary, but other way around will not happen. Secondary will not go to primary because that will make it least stable, okay? So that, again, the driving force here is stability okay the secondary will try to change it to tertiary so how can i make it to a tertiary right so if i move on to this carbon then that will become primary so that's not possible right so if i want to move that positive charge on this carbon from here to here then there's a hydrogen here okay so what it does basically it shifts the hydrogen okay so entire hydrogen with the bond and goes on to this carbon right so i can shift the whole group from one carbon to other carbon, right? So you take that off from here and place it here. Okay. Right, so that hydrogen will go here, but since we are taking electrons away from this carbon right here, that will get the plus charge, okay? So now your carbocation has shifted from a secondary to a tertiary. So this carbon right here is tertiary. Why is tertiary? Because attached to three other carbons. Right? So then it is a tertiary. And it is totally possible because the, the stability. And when you do a shift like this, we call it is one, two, hydride shift. Okay. Because what we are doing here is basically we are taking this hydrogen and putting into. So one, two here is nothing, to, got nothing to do with the nomenclature. It just means that it's happening between the two adjacent carbons, so one and two, okay? So that's the relationship between those two carbons, and that's why we call it as one and two. Because if you go to the advanced organic chemistry, then there are more shifts possible. You can have one, three, one, six shift, and that's why when it's happening between the two adjacent carbon, we call that as one, two shift, okay? So hydrogen is moving from one carbon to other carbon, okay? That's shifting the hydrogen. And this process is called as rearrangement because we are rearranging the positive charge to be more stable, all right? So this is one way to do it, okay? Shifting a hydrogen from one place to other place, okay? Because we have a choice here. We have a hydrogen. What if you don't have a hydrogen, right? If the hydrogen is not a choice, then what are the other choices we have? Or what are the other options we have, okay? So let's say if I have the same example, and instead of having a hydrogen here, if I place a, a CH3, okay? So if I have a CH3 here, then I can do the same thing, okay? But with the CH3 now, okay? So this, you are still secondary, and it will try to change it to a tertiary carbon, right? So, so the whole CH3 along with the bond, okay? So that's how we show it. The whole CH3 along with the bond was shifted to carbon two, right? In this case, we call that as one, two metal shift because we are moving a metal. So you have to write this in a square bracket every time you do the shifts or the rearrangement, okay? So to show what you're doing here. So this is one, two, methyl shift. So methyl will go on to this carbon now, okay? And this carbon here will become positive, okay? So again, the driving force here is secondary to tertiary. So changing secondary into tertiary, which is the most stable carbocation. So we have three major categories of reactions. Right? So you can have a reaction like this. So you have a carbon with an X, and then you bring in a Y. 
Okay, so let me just write down all the reactions and then we'll divide them with the name. So let me have the X <clears throat> like that. And you can have X and Y here. Or we can start with a double bond. Add X and Y. All right. So these are the three reactions, a major category, three reactions, right? So first reaction, what we're doing here is we have a carbon with X, and that X is replaced with Y in the product, right? So if you just compare the starting material and the product here, okay? You had X here, and then now that's replaced by a Y. So this reaction is called as substitution reaction. Okay, so that is your substitution reaction. Okay, X gets getting substituted by Y. Okay. Now, if you look at this structure right here, so we are actually losing X and Y from the molecule. Right? So this is the whole structure. And if you look at your product here, we lost X and Y. So when you're losing a part of the molecule that is elimination. So those are elimination reactions. All right. And when you start with a double bond and you add on top of the double bond, okay, we call that as addition reaction. Right. <clears throat> so elimination and addition reaction that are exactly opposite. We can see here. We, we start with X and Y and we create a double bond. And in case of addition reaction, we start with a double bond and add X and Y to that. Okay, so addition and elimination reactions are exactly opposite. And then we have substitution. So substitution is the simpler one, I guess, because you just replaced X with Y, okay? So what we're gonna be doing next here is we have substitution reaction, that's your chapter seven. Okay, this is chapter eight and chapter nine. So we'll be discussing these reactions in detail, okay? So what is the mechanism of this reaction, right? <clears throat> well, what, what are different forms of substitution you can have, okay? So basically each and every detail we'll learn in this verse. All I can tell you is now onwards, we're gonna be talking about a lot of reactions, all right? So chapter seven, chapter eight, chapter nine, and chapter 10, basically they're all based on what we're gonna be learning here. So reaction mechanisms, so there are two major categories of mechanisms that will be used in organic chemistry, okay? And these are the couple of examples that you already saw before, okay? And all I can tell you is anytime you have a reaction, there should be a mechanism for that, okay? So basically, when we say mechanism, we're talking about how can we show the reaction path using the curved arrows. So when we use the curved arrow to show the electron movement, that's called as a reaction mechanism, all right? So let's say if you have an example like this, so you have a Cl and H, and you have OH minus here, right? So you have HCl and O minus, right? So that is your B minus and HA. So this is your acid-base reaction, right? So this is your Bronsted acid. Okay, so that's your acid, and that's your base. All right, so base will go pick up the hydrogen, and that electron pair will go on A, so that will be your Cl minus, and HO, so O will pick up the hydrogen. So, so this is your conjugate base and conjugate acid. All right, <clears throat> so the reaction mechanism is again, when you show the curved arrows, the electrons are moving from here and then it's moving from here to here, okay? So this is a very common mechanism that would be used in organic chemistry, okay? Now, the same thing I can apply to this. Let's say if you have a carbon with a plus charge, right? And if you have the OH minus, right? So carbon plus is your Lewis acid, right? So this is your Lewis acid. So this will become your Lewis base, right? So the negative has to go towards the positive. So electron pair will go to the positive, right? And that will become that will give you OH. 
right? So that's your product, right? So this is your bronze acid base reaction. This is your Lewis acid base reaction, right? So these are the only two reactions that we use every time, okay? Now, if you realize any time a reaction happens, okay, there are two things you're looking at. Okay, if I want to form a bond, okay, a bond has to be between a plus charge and a minus charge, right? So cations and anions will come together and form the bond, right? So if you look at here, what's happening is negative is going to the hydrogen, okay? Now, when I said the negative always has to go to the positive, why this negative is going to the hydrogen? Why not to chlorine? Because if you realize what kind of bond is the chlorine and hydrogen bond, okay? So this is a polar bond and chlorine is more electronegative. That means the electron flow is toward this side. So chlorine has a delta negative and there's a hidden delta positive charge on the hydrogen, okay? So if you realize, in other words, what's happening here is negative going towards the positive because there's a positive charge on this hydrogen, all right? And this one is pretty obvious, negative is going to the positive, okay? So if it's not obvious, you have to look at this way, okay, why the negative charge is going to the hydrogen, right? So in general, okay, anytime you pick up a hydrogen or something which picks up a hydrogen, we call it as a base, okay? So a base, let's say, that attacks hydrogen. Right? In, a, in a reaction, when I say a base, in general terms, right? So that's what we use. All right. <clears throat> so anything which attacks a hydrogen is a base, right? That attacks a hydrogen is a base, right? And anything which attacks a carbon plus, right? So that attacks carbon plus, okay? We call that as a nucleophile. Okay, so in this case, we can also call this as a nucleophile because attacking the carbon plus. Right, so nucleophile attacks carbon plus. So this can be your nucleophile, right? And nucleophile attacks to something and that is called as electrophile. So file means liking, okay? So since you have a positive charge, it will like electrons, right? So that's why it's electrophile. It likes electrons because it has a plus charge. And which likes nucleus, okay? So carbon is our nucleus. Which likes nucleus is a nucleophile. So negative charge always likes the nucleus which has a plus charge. That's why we're gonna be using other term for these two, okay? Electrophile and nucleophile. So which likes electrons is electrophile and which likes nucleophile is which lies nucleus is nucleophile, okay? So in general terms, anytime I say it is a base, then we're talking about a base is picking up a hydrogen, okay? And if I say it's a nucleophile, then nucleophile has to attack to the carbon, all right? So these are the general considerations we'll make for the coming ch chapters.